A few weeks ago, I was on the verge of finishing my sheet painting right here, but I feel like I overworked the sky. So I stepped away from it and decided to do a smaller painting, a more simple one, and I finished it in one day, or at least 24 hours. And after that, I did a acrylic one in hopes I would finish it in one day, but it took several. Anyhow, now it is time to go back and finish the sky. And I will show you step by step how I am going to correct my big blunder. Hello and welcome. My name is Charalambos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. I just wrapped up my acrylic painting, which I call Vadolakos Fields number seven since it's the seventh painting in a series of landscapes from my village in Greece. I have my cup of coffee. It's actually kind of late. And yes, it's actual coffee. But it's never too late to have a good cup of coffee, especially if it's black. Anyways, this is how I'm going to fix my painting. The first step is I'm gonna sand the top. It has a little glossy look because I was using a lot of medium towards the end and if I don't sand it, the paint won't adhere. After that, I am going to mix my basic colors that I'm going to use to finish the painting. They will actually be on the simple side. I'm not going to go crazy and mix 20 different variations. The main colors can be titanium white with a bit of cadmium orange. And I'm also going to use alizarin crimson and cobalt blue. And for the dead center, where the sun is going to be, I will use a little bit of cadmium yellow. And lastly, the third step, I'm not going to rely too much on the photo when I paint. After staring at my painting for a very long time, waiting for it to dry, and doing the other two in the process, I came to the conclusion where I missed the simplicity of the background. But there were qualities that I did like from my mistakes. So in a way, I'm going to pick and choose what I liked from all my mess ups and use them. Which is the sun and particular colors that I feel will benefit the painting. And lastly, to simplify the clouds so they're not doom and gloom. And I get that overall sense of light that I've been trying to get. Anyhow, let's get started with sanding the painting first. Sand in is very important because the paint is very glossy from the medium that I use. By sand in, I will degloss it a little bit and the paint will better adhere. My hope is always for my paintings to stand the test of time. As I'm sanding though, I'm being very careful. The last thing I want to do is penetrate and go past the gesso. But thankfully, I did give it a extra coating of peach, actually two. So I'm not too concerned. As for sandpaper, I'm using something on the higher grit. Nothing too rough because I want a smooth finish, not a coarse one. I also am being mindful of areas I do not want to sand. So I'm being extra careful around the hills and trees. I don't want to repaint more than necessary after all. So I'm being extra cautious around those edges. After sanding, I wiped down the area with a clean cloth. As for why the painting was upside down, it was so the debris does not go towards the rest of the painting and it could fall onto the ground instead. Now after sanding, it's time to mix some colors. The colors I will be using are titanium white, the cadmiums, yellow, red, and orange, and also alizarin crimson and cobalt blue. The first mixture I'm going to make is titanium white and cadmium orange. This is going to be the main color that I'm going to use. Other colors will most likely be a transition from this. Is when you mix a color, try to thoroughly press down with your knife and scoop up as much of the paint as possible and then reapply it right back down. And repeat as much as necessary until the mixture looks very consistent throughout. Now I am going to mix cobalt blue and alizarin crimson with titanium white. The goal is to get a nice lavender purple. Again, as you mix the paint, be very thorough and don't be afraid to press down and scoop as much as possible 
then press right back down repetitively until you have a nice consistent mixture. Also, as you mix a color, don't be afraid to tweak it. If you noticed, I kept applying more and more cobalt blue until I got the desired color I was looking for. Now time to mix my next color, which is going to be cadmium yellow and titanium white again. The purpose of this color is to get the brightest possible tone and this will be used specifically for the center of the sun and it will also extend a little bit past and give the illusion of waves in a painterly like way. I mentioned this before but I will mention it again. Press down hard as you mix and keep mixing until the paint is very consistent throughout and scoop up the paint completely and press down again in order to make sure you are thorough with the entire consistency of the color you are trying to mix. Also use two knives. That way you can scrape excessive paint from hard to reach areas of one knife so none of the color goes to waste. Oil paint is expensive after all. And make sure your knives are clean. That way the colors you mix are as pure as possible. So have plenty of clean rags at your disposal. Now it is time to paint. I began with the sun, the dead center where it is the brightest. I used my titanium white and cadmium yellow mixture, mostly titanium white, in order to get that very bright tone. After all, the illusion of light is very important to me. The main goal from the beginning was to capture the orange glow that I saw that day that the photo did not show. After that, I began to paint around the sun. Here I'm using my titanium white and cadmium orange mixture. I'm mostly just applying the color in the beginning stages. Later, I will dry brush and get a nice transition from one color to the other. Also, I'm being very careful painting around the edges of the rest of the landscape. I'm trying not to repaint areas that are already finished or at least minimize areas that I would have to touch up in the end. I start applying my lavender, which is cobalt blue and alizarin crimson mixed with some titanium white. Even though the clouds are not in the photo, I felt it was necessary to include some clouds because the entire day was cloudy and towards the end the sun decided to come out and shine its orange rays. As I start to paint further and further away from the sun, the color becomes more orange red. In order to get that tone, I use a combination of the lizard crimson but also cadmium red. Once again, I'm painting very carefully around the landscape, particularly the trees this time. As you go further and further from the sun, the sky becomes cooler and cooler. It transitions slowly from a warm tone to actually a very cool tone that still has a bit of warmth. In a way, it's a very delicate balance. And I was trying to avoid making an outright pink color. In order to tone down and cool the color, I use a little bit of cobalt blue as well. But this was probably the most difficult part for me because I was trying to get a very good balance of the right color. And you'll notice throughout the rest of the video, I repaint this section several times until I felt it was just right. By the end, I became an expert of carefully painting around edges, like I'm doing here once again. Besides the edges of the landscape, another area I was very careful when it came to dry brushing was the edge where the cloud met the sky. If too much blue made contact with the orange, it would have ruined the orange glow where the sun was. I wasn't satisfied on how the sun looked, so I started to actually repaint it. I actually wanted to make it a lot bigger, so I started to extend the colors of the sky with it. And once again, I repainted this area and touched up very carefully around the edges of the landscape again and carefully dry brushed the bodies of color 
to make a nice smooth transition from the sun all the way to the far right of the painting. I was also not too happy with the tone of the sky on the far right, so I started to repaint it again. But while I was doing it and stepping away from the painting and looking at it from a distance, I felt it was too bright, especially since the power of the sun diminishes and the night is starting to begin from the other end of the earth. And since the paint was wet still, I had to push the paint around every time I applied it and then dry brush it to a nice smooth finish. But I also was mindful of the bottom where the landscape meets the sky and carefully paint it around the edges. So I reached a stage of the painting where I said this is done, but I was not satisfied. I still felt I didn't capture that light I saw that day. So yes, you could call me insane, but I began to repaint the sky once more. But this time, I decided to break apart the big cloud and make it into several. So I mixed more colors and I started to apply more bodies of the orange peach and break apart the clouds. And since the paint was wet, I would dry brush and try to create a nice smooth transition from one body of color to the other. I even made the sun a little bit bigger as well. But one notable change I made was I started to apply pure orange around the edges of where the cloud and sun was. I felt it was necessary to give the illusion of the sun's rays burning through the cloud. And instead of dry brushing a smooth finish, I kind of twirled the paint around in that area to give it a string-like appearance. And to finish off the sky, I began to work the right side once more. This was possibly the hardest color to make because I had to make the right balance between cobalt blue and a lizard and crimson and also orange and not make it look muddy, but instead a cool tone that had a tiny bit of warmth still left in it and then dry brush it. But instead of a smooth finish, towards the end, I decided to have more of a painterly look I wasn't copying the photo, I was trying to paint what I saw. And maybe it was just my imagination, but I still remember that day. It was a nice orange glow that just came out of nowhere after a day full of clouds. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. I was striving for the perfect sky. Did I achieve it? I don't know, but for sure, I had to move on. But when I stare at it from a distance, you get that sense of light in the end. Once again, my name is Charlambos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. Stay tuned for my next painting. Bye.